Hi, this is Frank, and this is a piece of walnut that I picked up a few years ago, and I've had an idea to make a coffee table out of it, but after thinking about it, I think I want to make a prototype first before I cut into this precious piece of walnut that I only have one of and I really don't want to screw up. <laughs> Almost exactly a year ago, I cut up a fir tree with my friend Gabe, and part of that were some shorter sections of the trunk, and we cut a few cross sections of the trunk. I think they were four inches thick, thinking we could use them for coffee tables or some sort of smaller projects. So I took two of those home and let them dry for the past year. As their end grain, and I didn't paint them with anything, they dried pretty fast. I took the bark off the outside. Some of it was starting to fall off. I decided just to remove it. And I started to clean up the edges a little bit. I think I'll do this more once I've shaped the table a little more. On August 27th, the Maker Mob will be hosting a live webinar with my friend Jimmy DeResta. He will be sharing his design process and how he works through many of his projects and where he gets his inspiration. Follow the link below to sign up for this exciting live event with Jimmy DeResta. There's a big crack in this section of the tree, so I thought I would make some ties to hold that together. I cut out some butterfly shapes to fill in some cutouts in the top of the table to sort of stitch those cracks back together again. My idea with this table was to do a nice top, but to also spend some time on the legs and the underside of the table. I see so many of these done where all the work is done on the top and then the legs are sort of just an afterthought. And I thought it would be neat to make the top nice, but to also carve and shape the underside and make the legs really more a part of the top and the entire project. For holding the workpiece on the table, I just put my hold downs along the edge of the piece of wood and just use the weight of the wood to hold it down. So it's just being prevented from sliding around. So I glued the butterflies in place and these went in fairly easily. There was space for the air to get out <laughs> because of the crack. Just snug enough that I don't need to clamp them in place. Then I flattened the top. I drew a shape sort of of the butterflies and that allowed me to do just that area with a couple of passes as they were a little bit higher than the surface of the table. And that meant that this went a little bit quicker. Then I did the whole tabletop, which didn't take too long. I think each pass over the table only took I'm trying to remember, maybe 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes, something like that. I think I did three, maybe four passes, taking off just a little bit more each time. I have a two inch bit in the router, so it goes pretty fast. And I have the top flattened, looks pretty good. And I can flip it over and start working on the bottom or where the legs are gonna go. <laughs> So to figure out the legs and the model, I took a photograph and cleaned the photograph up. Then I could use this picture of the section through the tree to start doing the model. So I brought this image into Fusion and I could use that as a image to model over and sort of trace and use to locate different parts of the model. So really the big thing was to lay out where the legs were gonna go 
and I spent some time with three circles, moving them around, trying to figure out what felt about right with the shape of the top. I had seen a photo of a gas station a few years ago that kind of inspired the design for this. I really wanted the legs to kind of be columns that came up and flared out and receive the underside of the table. So the, the legs almost kind of drip down from the table. And that's what I came up with. So this is the model to run on the CNC to cut the shape. And what I did at this point was to slice off the legs and have a, a table section I could run on the section through the tree and three leg sections that I could run on the fourth axis and cut out the legs. The legs and the underside of the table are from the same model, so hopefully they will match up when I put everything back together again. <laughs> so this is the surface of the underside of the table. So it doesn't have the thickness of the tabletop. It's just sort of what's going to get cut. The first thing to do is to flatten the underside. So I just ran some passes on this just to make it flat and parallel to the table. It's always a little bit tricky doing this as you're, you're never quite sure where the high spot is and what to reference the height of the cut from. But usually stay a little bit high and once it does one pass you kind of get an idea of where the high and low spots are. And from there you can start to step down. So I've got the two inch bit in. I wasn't going more than an eighth of an inch deep each time. And the bottom is flat, so it's now parallel with the table. I tried and tried and could not figure out how to rotate the model or the G-code in Fusion. I just needed to rotate everything 90 degrees. <laughs> so I ended up just rotating the piece of wood on the table and I had to find my zero, zero point. As I had the photo in Fusion, I could tell where the zero, zero point was on the photo, so I sort of had to find that point on the actual piece of wood. It didn't have to be super perfect, it just had to be pretty close. Then I could start doing the roughing pass. So I have a one inch bit on the router and I can cut out most of the mass of the wood on this pass. So it moved pretty fast and it cut a lot, but it still took quite a while. Maybe an hour, I don't really remember. It wasn't like six or eight hours, it was more like an hour or, or maybe 90 minutes, something like that. And that's the roughing pass. It's actually kind of cool when it's stepped down like that. And it made a lot of sawdust. I really wanted to see what the bit was doing, so I didn't put the cover on the router. So the sawdust kind of went everywhere. <laughs> but it didn't take too long to clean everything up. Once I had the roughing pass cut, I decided I really wanted a little bit more height. So what I came up with was to add some more wood at the tops of the legs, or where the legs will interface with the bottom of the table. So I made three segmented rings to glue to the underside of the table. So I found a strip of maple that I cut into segments. One surface of the ring needs to be flat and the joints need to be tight, but the inside and the outside of the ring don't really matter because the inside you won't see, it'll be buried in the leg, and the outside will get cut off by the router. So I made three quick rings, and I could glue those together and then clamp them with a hose clamp and let them set up, and it looks good. <laughs> So now that those are glued, I can sand one face, and that face will interface with the bottom of the table. And it's just a matter of gluing those down and making sure there's enough material. I think I did actually make three different sized rings, as some of these spots are a little bigger than the others. 
and I just used some old motors as weight clamps, <laughs> which works just fine. These don't have to be in an exact location. They just have to provide enough material so there aren't any gaps when I cut the final shape. Then I just ran the roughing pass again. When I first ran the roughing pass, it had cut a bunch of air for the top bit where there wasn't any material. And now when I'm running it a second time, it's actually hitting the tops of the legs that I've just made. And once I got through this new bit of material, I just stopped the run and it didn't go to the lower section. I didn't move the piece of wood mounted on the table. So everything's in exactly the same location. So you can see how it's taking off the material and just kind of finding that shape within the circle that I made. Now the roughing pass is done. I flattened the tops of the new rings. I didn't quite get everything, which I went back and fixed before I ran the finishing pass. So I did sort of a rough finishing pass, which is what this is. And I think I have a half inch round nose bit for this. Then I did a more finished finishing pass, which is the same bit, but I did a tighter step on the passes. So it, it took off a little more material. I did the sort of rougher finishing pass just to make sure I was getting everything and there weren't any gaps or holes. And then doing the, the, the finished finishing pass made everything much closer to perfect. <laughs> and this really didn't take too long. I think these took less than an hour. And that's what that looks like. And that's what the underside of the table looks like. So I think I'm going to stop this video here. This was sort of a project in itself. And the next video will be making the legs, which is a project in itself. <laughs>